<clears throat> so um, welcome everybody here to the Martin Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY. And we have uh, with us uh, the great uh, director Milo Rao, who is now also the artistic director of the Vienna Festspiele, the festival. And with him also is Ivan Sanier, one of the great uh, artistic collaborators for the film, which we are going to see at five o'clock, uh, the new gospel. So welcome both of you first. How are you guys? Uh, very, very, very well. Thank you. Thank you, Frank, for having us. Uh, tu vas comment, Yvan? Il demande. Oui, non, je vais très, très bien. Un peu de, de maladie, mais ça va. Yeah, he very, very fine, too. Where are you? Where are you both? So I'm, I can say for him, too, so in Rome. Yvan is in Rome and I am in right. so Germany and Italy. Yeah, to Italy. So um, thank you so much. We just finished the screaming of the... Uh, uh, Orestia in, in Mosul. It was a powerful uh, film, um, of course, an engagement um, with, with the classics in a truly um, new way. And we're going to show after this interview um, the new gospel. Um, for all of those um, who are interested and know about the work of, of Milo Rao, where he collaborated so closely with Ivan, uh, Milo, tell us a little bit about the film. Um, Orestes in Mosul. So it's a, it's a making of, and it's a, it's a, it's a making of a play uh, by the same name I did in 2018-19. It's the first part of the uh, uh, of the of the of the trilogy of the antique uh, tragedies. So the second part is the new gospel based on the Bible, and the third part is the Antigone and Amazon based on Antigone, which we can see in New York in a, in a, in and I think on Friday and Saturday in Skirball Center. And uh, Orestes in Mosul, as the name says, is is based on uh, Doris Dea by uh, by by Aeschylus. And uh, as you know, it's a it's a cyclic tragedy. So the father kills the daughter, the mother kills the father, the son kills the mother, uh, and in the end is the judgment of uh, Athene of the of the goddess Athene. The question is, how can you end the circle of violence? And of course, uh, I, I I was in search of a context that could kind of uh, contextualize this uh, this tragedy, and uh, that's why we went to Mosul, so the former former capital of the so-called Islamic State, which was liberated in 2017, and we went there in 18, 19, and worked together with the the Academy of of Acting, and together we made a play that then toured in uh, a bit everywhere in Europe and abroad, and uh, and we made this film about the making of the of the play, and that's what you saw. Fantastic. I think it's a great uh, approach to work to not only be present on stage in front of a live audience, but also to document work, to have a uh, traces uh, fixed, um, like visual artists often do, who, you know, do such great work in, in documenting their, their artwork, their paintings, their sculptures. And we theater people often don't, but you, uh, you do that. And that is fantastic. Even Ivan, um, can you please tell us a little bit how you met Milo and why you collaborated with him for the upcoming film we're going to see the new gospel. Uh, Yvon, um, comment comment s'est connu? Il, il, il se demande comment s'est connu toi et moi et pourquoi tu as décidé de travailler avec avec moi sur le film qu'on va voir après euh, le nouvel évangile. Alors j'ai connu Milo Rao en 2017 euh, environ en 2018. Euh, il m'avait contacté euh, pour euh, réaliser euh, le film euh, Le Nouveau Gospel, le, le Nouvel Évangile. À ma terre, il cherchait une figure euh, euh, qui ressemblait au Jésus de Pasoli, mais une figure activiste, syndicale. Et voilà, euh, il a fait une recherche euh, sur Internet et autres recherches, voilà, avec ses collaborateurs. Et, et... Traduire pour Milo euh, un moment. Yeah, I will. Uh, je vais traduire hein, le, le premier segment. Uh, mm. uh, so we we knew each other in uh, 2018, and I was in search for uh, for an activist uh, who could play uh, Jesus. Who because we were in Matera, where Pasolini made the film in in the 60s, um, his Jesus film, and uh, I, I was interested to do this with an activist. Uh, uh, actor, and uh, that's how I started the research, and then in the end I found Yvon. Yvon, 
for the audience to know, Ivan was an, an activist, a union organizer in a kind of a dangerous environment down in Matera in south of Italy, where um, a lot of the production uh, of uh, the simple tomato cans we arrive here in our supermarkets is strongly connected to criminal um, structures and organizations. And um, and uh, Ivan was fighting um, to... to uh, have a fair wage and a fair treatment of everybody. And, and this is one of the great uh, differences of a traditional theater where perhaps, you know, you cast someone from the ensemble because they actors have the contracts, they have one main role to other roles or in big productions, celebrity actors or great actors get have to come audition and cast. Um, Milo uh, said, um, I'm going to go out of the four walls, out of the places we know. We made a big statement, we go to the third world, fourth world, the, the other world, engage there, and he invited an activist to actually play a role of a, of a classic. Um, Ivan, um, have you done theater before? Uh, Ivan, tu as fait du théâtre avant de uh, faire ce film? No, je n'ai jamais fait du théâtre. No, no. What did it, yeah, what did it mean for you, Ivan, next to your political work, your dangerous political work, where you put your life at risk and have an incredible achievement, what you put on, but what did it mean for you to collaborate with Milo, a theater artist? Alors, euh, à part de ton travail comme activiste, qui est très dangereux, où tu te mets ta vie euh, en risque, qu'est-ce que ça te donnait, qu'est-ce que ça te dit de travailler avec, avec moi sur ce projet oui, euh, euh, déjà c'est un honneur de travailler avec Milo, ça a été un honneur. Milo, c'est un des plus grands activistes, artistes euh, de cette génération. Et voilà, euh, c'est une grande opportunité parce que la méthode de Milo Rao de travail, c'est une méthode sociale, c'est du théâtre social. Donc euh, pour nous, il est important de pouvoir euh, divulguer le, notre combat. Et voilà. Et grâce au théâtre et grâce à la réputation, à la renommée de Milo, euh, cela fait de telle sorte que euh, notre action est toujours plus combattue, est toujours plus diffusée. Uh, for uh, for Ivan, it was a, a big honor, but also a big opportunity to to work uh, together with me because it's social theater and it was a possibility to spread his activism through this uh, film to make his, his, his struggle known to more people in, uh, in Europe. Um, Ivan, what happened after the film? What, what changed for you and for the people there? Uh, after the film, what has changed? What has changed for you and for uh, the people there? Alors, il y a beaucoup de choses qui ont changé. Euh, euh, grâce au film, euh, il a été mis en action un grand mouvement qui s'appelle la révolte de la dignité. C'est un mouvement euh, pensé par euh, Milo, pensé par le film, euh, qui euh, met ensemble beaucoup d'associations qui, à l'époque, ne se connaissaient pas pour pouvoir travailler ensemble et atteindre le même objectif qui est la dignité, la dignité des personnes, le changement. Et donc voilà, on a pu, grâce à ce mouvement qui a été instauré par le film et par Milo, euh, on a pu avoir des maisons, par exemple à Matera, euh, grâce euh, aux prêtres où des, beaucoup d'immigrés ont dormi, on a pu avoir des financements pour acheter des voitures pour les travailleurs, voilà, il y a eu beaucoup de choses. Un moment pour, pour, pour la traduction. I, I translate, uh, je traduis. Um, yeah, there was a lot of changings because what we did uh, parallel to the film was the so-called revolt of dignity. Uh, so we created the movement which was connecting all the smaller movements that already existed and that then knew each other. And what, what, what changed, for example, uh, they could buy houses for the farm workers, they could uh, buy cars to go to the field. So that's that's two changes that he mentioned. Oui, et et, et, et c'est également important de souligner que grâce à Milo, on a été connu au niveau européen, au niveau international. On a des maintenant des activistes en Allemagne, la Christian Lust en Suisse, euh, en Autriche, qui euh, euh, nous soutient, qui achète nos produits, nos capes. Voilà, il y a un grand mouvement qui s'est créé parce que le film a été connu, diffusé, voilà, 
beaucoup de gens se sont réunis à nous au niveau international parce que c'est une bataille, la nôtre qui est une bataille internationale. So on the international level, uh, a lot of people, because of the film, knew uh, his his work and his movement. That means that because what they do, they produce fair trade tomatoes. And now through the film, these tomatoes and their productions became known in all different countries over Europe. And these people, of course, the consumers started to buy these tomatoes. And that means that they can uh, continue their work. Yeah, it's a collective, right? He started, what's the name of it? En fait, tu travailles avec une organisation. Quel est le nom de cette organisation? L'organisation s'appelle No Cap, No Caporalato, No Mafia. Voilà. The Ça name of the organization no... is No Cap, which means no mafia. Because normally the market of tomatoes is organized and controlled by mafia, but he, yeah, he created the tomato distribution system besides the mafia. Yeah, so everybody who listens actually can encourage friends and restaurant owners or suppliers to, to work with that. Um, Milo, a, a question for you. Um, instead of uh, directing um, a Greek tragedy audio theater at Antigent, you went out there. Um, why are you doing this? Oh, I mean, there are, I, I think there's always different, uh, let's say different things that click together. Um, on the one hand, I was, uh, in the beginning of my career, I was a reporter, a war reporter. I studied sociology. I started doing films, then theater around when I was 20, 25. And I always tried to mix or to bring together like social struggle and uh, the art of theater or filming. Um, And I always try to mix it because I found out that on the one hand, the two, let's say the two fields uh, of action could kind of dialectically inspire one the other. So when I met a, a good example is, for example, when I met uh, Yvon Sanier, then he said, yeah, I play your Jesus, but then uh, only when we do the revolt of dignity and when we try to use the film that something changes in the, in the, in the, in the, Yeah, in the in the let's say in this tomato industry which we are describing in the film. So that we and 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 that's a bit what I'm trying to do to create an art that describes but also changes what uh, what 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 the plays are, are describing. On the other hand, um, you know the Bible, a revolutionary book, but what which was for for two thousand years in the hands of the of the of the of the church. And I think there was a very spiritual reading of the book. But when you go back To the real message of the book, it's a revolutionary book about against the empire, where the lost of the of the of the of the of the of the of a, of a, of a, of a whole society connect and make a revolt of dignity. In fact, so I think that I searched for a context where this book would be needed as a revolutionary manifesto, and it was exactly there. I think it would have been difficult for me to do a, a Jesus film with actors in in in. A, in a kind of a, of a, of a studio world. So I, I, I needed this context to, to straight go to the message of the Bible. And, uh, and of course, Yvonne and all the others that, that perform in the film or produced it together with me uh, decided on the direction of the film. So if I, I would say if, if I would have found another Jesus, then, uh, then uh, Yvonne Sanier, we would have talked about another struggle or something completely different. So it's very much, my, my whole work is very much defined by uh, by the performers I meet. And um, yeah, but this is really an extraordinary example because we, we, we could achieve so many things that are completely not connected to the film industry, you know? So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it is the mission of art to, to reinterpret the symbols and symbolic meanings of text for each generation knew the great Joseph Boyce artist said, do not make fun of the golden deers uh, on the oil paintings. He said the original idea behind it is fantastic. It's brilliant to encounter an animal in moonlight in the forest to connect to nature. What happened to it? It became a cliche. It became meaningless. And you do not see them anymore, the meaning. And I think what you did also with this text, it's a text-based uh, uh, religion, as you once said, conflicting sources, actually. People are discussing what's right and wrong, the four witnesses. 
And um, and what you did with um, that uh, reinterpretation also as a call for action, I think is truly um, sensational. Um, you say resistance now is possible through theater and you also will give or have given us a speech just now from the World Theater Day um, of the ITI, the International Theater Institute. Um, can we resist with theater? Is that really thinkable, possible in your mind? You know, it's it's it's. I that's what I try to say in the in the uh, in the in the speech that resistance has not a form. Resistance is the form, and this form is different in every struggle. And I think for every product production you do. You have to find this form and you find it through the context, through the people you meet and so on. So I somehow with the film joined and kind of tried to connect with the resistance of, of Yvon Sanier and the African farm, farm workers uh, in the in the south of Italy. So I think, of course, resistance through theater is possible, but it's just a decision what kind of theater you do, you know. And I think it's really it's all about somehow it's all about solidarity and about inspiration and about uh, where you go to. And I think to make a resisting theater inside the black boxes is much more uh, difficult perhaps, and perhaps even impossible in many moments of history um, than when, when you go, for example, on the farm, you go to Mosul, you go to what we will see in the weekend, we go to, to the Amazon. And then the story of Antigone and her dead brother becomes a completely uh, different sense than in the Comédie Française, you know. So I think it's 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 super important to kind of uh, mirror the Canaan we have, or mirror the theater we do in the reality of the surrounding world, and to see what these, these stories can still tell us. But I, I describe one little moment, and I think it's very important uh, in this in this speech that was in a discussion, a panel discussion in Paris, and that was making jokes about the European canon and that we reproduce again and again the same 10 plays from, from Shakespeare and Chekhov. And then a, an artist from Tehran said, stop playing Chekhov in Tehran, in Iran, is a revolution, is resistance. So again, resistance is a form, but has no form, and this form is changing. So I could not, sometimes people are asking me, but can you explain me in a workshop how resisting art functions? I say, it's different from every situation to another situation. It's different from every team to another team. So there is no, there's no rule, but you can, of course, uh, feel it if something changes. Mm -hmm. um, I think Joseph Boy's solution for that magical moment of connecting to nature, the deer and the night of our moon, he went back to cave paintings, the earliest traces of mankind engaging with art, where he said, this is a way for us to reconnect. We actually have to go back um, to the roots. Um, today are listening uh, young theater makers, playwrights, directors, costume designers, and also they will come to your performance at NYU's Kerbal this weekend, and they will also watch the film. Um, there is something to say to them, um, what you say, I wish I had known when I started out, but what would be a message to uh, encourage or to um, uh, make people think about this form of theater you stand for, a theater of resistant, politically and socially engaged? Um, I mean, there is a big branch in my work, and even I would say the whole story, the new gospel, but also Orestes in Mosul or Antigones, there's a lot of poetry, a lot of fun, a lot of very... Um, small stories, very human stories. So I think it's really important that you don't kind of uh, think that political theater is something like Akit Pop. Because if you were talking about Joseph Beuys, and when you look at Joseph Beuys, what is his political message, you know? It's, as you said, about connection, but as a clear political message, it's quite unclear what it is. So I often say to the, to the, to the, to the young makers that, uh, a play should be complex. And when you look at the new gospel, it's very complex. You see, for example, the narcissism of Jesus. You see the difficulties of a little group of revolutionaries. You see that, the, let's say, that the antagonism inside the group might be bigger than the antagonism towards the government, for example, so that there is an implosion of a social movement. What the, what the new gospel, by the way, is describing. 
in this uh, in this example of South of South Italy. But sometimes you feel that you need to make a speech. You, you need to write a manifesto. You feel that you need to work together with a real movement because there are many things that in art are perhaps not the best place to do, but there are many other fields. And I think it's super important that as an artist, you are a public figure too. You are an intellectual, you are an activist, you are a citizen, you are a friend, and that you try to, to play in all these roles. Because many today we go to a school, we learn directing, we know the Stanislavski method or some other method. And then we use this method, some other is doing the light, some other is doing the PR, some other is, and so on. And I think we should shift all the time the rules. And we should also work in fields that we don't know and work together with people that know these fields, you know? So I have no idea of, of Mosul, for example, but I met a lot of people who know everything about Mosul. So that made it possible that my contribution could grow inside this connection of different people. And I think this is super this is super important to know. For example, Joseph Beuys, just to come last time back to him, he created the party, the Green Party in Germany, yeah? So, or he co-created it, but yeah. he had no idea of politics and he was even not interested in politics, but he just felt the need to connect. And I think this is, this is what I felt and what Yvonne felt when we met. He said, okay, I'm not an actor, but this connection will help. And I felt, okay, I'm not an activist and I'm not a farm worker, but together we can make a change that alone we can do. And I think this is this is political art. Yeah, very good. And I like your approach. I think you also talked about it when you were here in New York, where you said I put out an idea and I, I also don't know what will happen. You, you ask people to collaborate, to bring something to it so it's a it's a project that grows and um and even if you do not know where it will end up you have a clear idea it's important it's meaningful and you um, um are like the fassbinder was called the spielleiter he was a director of a game you know and um and it's very courageous uh, to tackle also these big subjects which easily can be made fun of from the cynical uh, uh world we we live in and i think it is um, a great um a great uh, uh, way to call what Peter Sondi, uh, the uh, theory person of theater said, you know, that theater often is like Prometheus, it's chained on the block, whether it's commercial theater, whether it's uh, uh, the the convenience of, you know, doing what we already saw before. Heiner Müller said the theater is something great when you do not know what's happening and you haven't seen it before. And what you did is you kind of liberated this uh, suffering theater from the chains and where the liver was eaten away um, from so many, many forces. So I think it is it is a stunning uh, invention. Um, a question to Ivan. Ivan, did you engage with the text? Milo engaged with activism, with your cause. Did you engage with the text? Did you discuss the text? How did you distribute the text of the new gospel? Une, une question à toi, Yvon. Moi, j'ai essayé de faire mes liens avec l'activisme, mais toi, avec l'art, avec le texte, comment, comment, on a, comment tu as travaillé dans ce film? Comment tu as collaboré dans, dans le film? And the text, yeah. Ah, et, et le texte du film. Oui, alors, euh, ce n'était pas simple au début. Comme je disais, je ne suis pas un acteur professionnel, mais euh, ce qui m'a motivé, et il y a deux raisons qui m'ont motivé, en fait. Euh, la première, c'est que euh, le thème euh, du film parlait, euh, disons, des thèmes de, dont je m'occupe, voilà. Et voilà, de, de la lutte contre les, euh, contre l'exploitation des travailleurs pour les droits de l'homme, c'est des sujets dont j'étais très à l'aise. So there are two motivations or two things that he's not a professional actor, but two things that made him uh, understand the task. So the first thing was that the topic uh, of the film is very close to his own struggle. So it's a film against exploitation of farm workers and so on. So this was something he could really uh, connect with. La, 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 la deuxième chose, c'est que je suis très, très religieux. Je suis, j'ai une très, très grande foi. Et voilà, je crois en Christ, je crois en Dieu. Et donc, le fait d'interpréter le Christ était un honneur pour moi. Voilà, donc... Ce sont les deux motivations, et sur le plan religieux, sur le plan de mon activiste, et 
euh, réciter les textes euh, de la Bible, en, en fait, ce n'était pas très, très, très difficile euh, pour moi. Euh, même si il y avait un peu de j'étais un peu timide, mais bon, après, voilà. So the second motivation was that he's a believer and playing the role of Jesus was for him, of course, a big, big honor. And uh, like, like the activist part, it was for him obvious to do it. Uh, concerning the text now, uh, reciting the text of the Bible was not difficult. It was not difficult to him, even if, of course, on the on the level of acting, he had to improve. But, uh, but perhaps that's an interesting thing. Uh, the film consists in the text of the Bible and everything that happens around. So you could say that the film is a kind of, a, the, the, but the main text is really the Bible. Okay. Um, Ivan, how, did, were you also part of decision what text to speak, what not, what scene to play, what not? How was the dialogue? Uh, et maintenant dans la collaboration du, uh, du film, comment c'était, est-ce que, Comment on a discuté sur quelle scène on va jouer, quel, etc. de la Bible, quel, quel est ton avis sur tout ça? Disons que les scènes, la scène biblique était, était, à la, à, disons, était le, le fait du film, c'est-à-dire a été orienté, imposé par Milo, imposé par, par voilà, le l'acteur le, le film. Par contre, la, les, la scène du documentaire où, où on faisait voir la TV a été un peu imposée, je ne dis pas par moi, mais je, disons, j'ai mené la grande partie, disons, eh, des orientations, des débats sur le, le documentaire, voilà, les ghettos, qui fallait faire parler, j'ai trouvé certaines personnes, voilà, donc, disons, le, la partie documentaire... Euh, Euh, j'étais presque à 100% l'acteur clé, voilà. alors que celui, la scène religieuse, c'était Milo et les autres. So, concerning the religious, biblical scenes, it was mainly me who decided on the, on the scenes. Um, but the biggest part of the film is, is the documentary part. When we go to different actors, we let them speak, we meet activists, we meet farm workers and so on. And it was, he says, not, yeah, almost 100% uh, the decision of of uh, of Yvon because he knew what to do so it's it's like you could say my side was the biblical side and his side was the the activist documentary side incredible and i just want to remind also our viewers um uh, this project was part of the uh, theater de l'europe also the european cultural city um and normally you know a director comes and works tireless to fulfill his, her, or their vision, what they want to do, control uh, every moment. And Milo went there with an idea. He looked for collaborators. The collaborator shaped the project of his idea to engage with this text. And it was uh, open to collaboration um, for a major, major part. It was a true collaboration with an activist and not to say we work with young actors, which might also be great, or young directors from the south of Italy. He said, no, well, let's um, think about this. In a way, perhaps, as the early Bob Wilson work, his engagement with Christopher Knowles, Raymond Andrews, when he worked what we would call the people who are outside, who are not part of the circles, people who are removed you know, from the center of it. And we learned something through that because he went outside uh, towards the unknown, the other, Lothar, um, and what he did. So I think this is just sensational. A question for Ivan. Um, I know you understand better than you, you speak, so you heard what I said. But Ivan, how did you change as a person? And did your activism change? Une question à toi, uh, Ivan. Um, comment tu as changé comme personne et comme activiste uh, par le travail uh, avec, avec ce film? Disons, je c'est un film qui m'a ouvert l'esprit euh, par rapport à à, à la au monde de la de l'association pour la, la capacité de faire euh, euh, disons un réseau de créer un réseau avec les autres de me lier de avec les autres voilà ça m'a ouvert euh, disons un esprit voilà sur ce sur cet aspect là et, et également 
ça m'a permis de pouvoir euh, savoir dialoguer avec euh, les associations internationales. Voilà, ça m'a donné une dimension un peu plus internationale de ce, euh, ce film dans mon activité. Voilà, je peux dire que grâce à ce film, je voyage un peu plus. Voilà, vers et pour pouvoir aller parler, pour pouvoir aller faire la révolution, exporter la révolution dans les autres pays. Voilà. So this this film uh, changed his capacity to relate to other organizations, also on the international level. And what happened is that it opened also his mind, and he sees now the problems much in a much bigger scale. He he travels much more to export, as he says the revolution into other countries because he's perhaps you don't know but he was the first one when he started as a farm work, worker himself the first one to do a strike against the mafia nobody ever dared to do so and he did it on sicily uh, 15 years ago and uh, of course it was this uh, battle that was very much based on the field on the it's a very local battle You know, so and and what happened with this film that it became a, a, at least a European battle. So everybody would know his struggle now. He travels a lot. He speaks a lot. So uh, because it's a European problem, and that's that was uh, kind of the the function of this film. J'ai j'ai expliqué encore un peu plus comment tu as commencé avec oh, ouais. le, avec le premier strike contre la mafia juste pour comprendre oh, un peu de quoi. Oh, tu... ouais, ouais. It's a, fa a fantastic uh, uh, outcome in a way. I remember also you talked about in New York when you talked about your new book also that came out um, and you said, if we can represent a system on stage, you can see a system working. It also means it can be changed because it is a system. In a very Prechen idea who said uh, Galileo looked at the chandelier that was moving from the uh, from the gravity of the earth while the I think that Dodge or Venice was speaking. He knew there's a higher reality system in place that is not connected to that. Um, and I think this work um, um, does that. Um, Milo, a question for you, um, even though, of course, it's an obvious one, but still, why do you think Ivan would represent the figure of the activist better than a, a fantastic actor, than... Um, um, you know, a, a great film actor. Why do you have in the Antigone production, you also work with activists. I know you're part of this theater of the real, as uh, the great uh, Carol Martin would say, and, and um, about realism, and we can talk about that for us later. But why do you think it is so important that there's Ivan on stage, on film, or the Ivans of this world, part in your work? I mean, it's, 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 For me, there is a question of legitimacy to to play a role and to play the role of Jesus. You need, and I arrived in Matera. You know, Matera. We didn't really mention it now. It's in the film, but Matera is the the world capital of Bible films because the the city looks like Jerusalem. You know, so Pasolini, Mel Gibson, like. Uh, All these people made their Bible films there. And when I arrived there, for me, it looked and felt empty. Perhaps the whole culture, uh, capital of culture thing. And then I found out that this city, which is Jerusalem in the, in the, in the world cinema, is surrounded by a whole industry of slave work. One million uh, slave workers are working there under the rule of the mafia. So, and in the middle is, is Jerusalem, you know? And this contradiction, which is a very biblical contradiction, you know, it's a bit like Jesus going to the to the priest saying, but you know the scripture, but where are the acts? Where is what does it change that you kind of recite it again and again in the temple? We have to change the world. And for me, it was a bit the same. You had to go out of this Pasolini, Mel Gibson, Matera to find uh the reality of this struggle, which is described in the Bible, because the Bible is not a historical book. The Bible is a book that is reactualized in every moment that it is read by somebody who is a believer and or somebody who is perhaps a Marxist or like me, who believes in, in, in dignity somehow. And I, I was in search and I was, I was searching for 
the apostles, for Jesus, for all these kind of, of people. And that the whole film is a search um, for it. And sometimes I find an actor and an actor is perfectly representing what, yeah, what the role means. And, uh, but I don't know, for me, describing and representing a story is, is just not enough anymore. Perhaps 20 years ago, perhaps 50 years ago, it was still okay. But today, as you said, what I want to show is the truth of a, of a story and not the naturalistic representation of somebody who looks like we imagine that Jesus looks like. We don't know, uh, by the way, but even then. And, and, and for me, the film is strong in a way that it really works. For example, we have Maya Mortenstern, this big Jewish actress who is playing Mother Mary. She played it in, in the Mel Gibson film too, The Passion of the Christ. And I worked with her before in another place, so I asked her, and she's the mother, a Romanian Jewish woman, uh, is 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 the mother of a of a of a of an activist from Cameroon, Ivan Sagné. And nobody ever, no, not one critique, not in Italy. Nowhere where we showed the film was ever mentioning it, because this kind of, uh, let's say, naturalistic approach, nobody is interested in this film. And I think that's very strong. And I think that's really the meaning of the Bible. And that's the meaning, perhaps, of of all allegorical plays, like Otto Antigone and Orestes in Mosul, where you have kind of people that would never appear on European stages because they they are just somewhere else. And um, yeah, for me, it was it was. When I met Yvonne, I knew immediately that that's it. So we 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 knew it, and I think he knew that this makes sense for him. Because why would he act? And what is my interest in in in, in Italian tomatoes? You know, but this connection made uh, immediately sense. Je je parle un peu beaucoup maintenant. Pourquoi j'ai décidé pour toi et pour uh, uh, mm. pour uh, pour d'autres non acteurs non professionnels activistes pour uh, pour jouer la Bible. Et en fait, ma conclusion, c'est que la Bible, ce n'est pas un livre qu'il faut représenter dans des images qui, qui ressemblent à quelque chose, mais c'est l'acte, c'est la philosophie qui compte. Mm -hmm. Exactement. Uh, about Antigone, how did that work? The, the work we're going to see now, um, you also worked with activists. Tell us, how, 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 did you follow the same procedure? Was it different? How did you find them? Um, there it was a bit by accident because I was I was touring in in Brazil and then we were approached by the by the landless movement the MSD and then they they they, they worked with Augusto Boal um, who you could say created the theater of resistance and liberation in the in the sixties and seventies and or the social theater and he was the most most prominent figure in the in the MSD movement from the from the from the theater side. And uh, this is a huge movement who is occupying land. It's a nation inside the nation. They have their own churches, their own education, their own everything. And then they said, let's work together because they, 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 they knew my work. And then we decided to do Antigone because it describes exactly the conflict they are confronted with. So that you have a traditional society and the capitalist society. You have Antigone and you have Creon, and then you have a kind of a of a fight of, of culture somehow, you know? And um, um, and we started to work on this. So it, it somehow, uh, like always my project moved very organically and very slowly from a meeting. I think in the beginning is always a meeting. It's always somebody and I meet somebody or Matera, it was just a phone call. They called me for Matera and they said, we saw your place. We are capital of the culture. Do you want to come? And I said immediately, I want to do a Jesus film. And from there it moved on. Then I met Yvon, etc. And the very same in in uh, Antigone in the Amazon. It was a, a series of of meetings and decisions and changings and and in the end I arrive uh, in in a play. And when you most of my plays or many of my plays have the form of a making of. So I always try to tell the story how I came to what you can see on stage. And I ask myself, but why, or we ask ourselves, but why did you do this decision and not that decision? For example, in the in the New Gospel, you have a lot of scenes that are crucial in the in the in the New Testament, but we didn't use them. 
For example, we filmed the whole resurrection in Rome on a, on a film La Resurrection in Rome. Uh, but then we, it didn't seem real to us. It didn't seem right to us. So we completely scratched it from the film. But it was a huge effort we did to make this. But then in the end, we didn't use it. So I think we are very... Uh, very hard with ourselves to in the end of this long process is to make the decision what can stay and what should uh, what should disappear yeah as far as I know you you also the text the Antigone text which is in a way a holy text I mean theater texts are in a way at least for us our holy scriptures um, you changed it radically also in discussing it tell us a bit yeah I mean it's it's that's a bit different. I think it's a bit less holy than the Bible text because in the Bible text we didn't change. Uh, we made it perhaps shorter or longer, but it's and in Antigone, uh, many is monstrous, nothing as monstrous as man. I think this sentence everybody knows and perhaps the most known sentence in literature. I would say, to be or not to be is a bit. It's on that level, no. And uh, I think then what we did making over weeks and months workshops together with the, the activists from the landless movement, we changed the choirs. And then we started to change the text. We improvised and we changed it again. And then we came back to the, to the et cetera. So we changed it in a way uh, that it became real uh, to the situation in the Amazon. But at the same time, sometimes we are also very happy of the, of the archaic distance that these texts are. There are parts of it that are unclear, but other parts that only become clear today. For example, the prophecy that is in the Antigone, where the, the, the priest, the Theresias, he says, the seer, he says, the rivers have no water anymore. The birds are not singing anymore. I can't read the signs of nature anymore. It gets hotter and hotter. Everything becomes silent. And you think, okay, that's about climate change, and it was written today but it was written 2000 years ago. And you know, so there is a kind of a very distant mirror in this, in the Bible, in the Oresteia, in which mirrors our own society and which, which gave me the impression that we live still in the same spam of time. So there is a is kind of, you know, a very short political, technical, I don't know, develop, history and then there is a history of long durée and there Antigone lives now and we live in the same time span like Antigone and I think this is all like Jesus we live in the same empire and this is uh, this is super interesting and I think in the moment when this changes and it becomes really distant and we are not living in the same uh, uh, culture anymore then I think we will not understand anymore we will not have a need anymore to read the Bible or read the tragedies. But until then, until we overcome, you could say, capitalism in the broadest sense of the world, until then we will need these texts and they will be our, our holy scriptures. Mm -hmm. You changed the end. Yeah, not me, not me. I think we changed no, together I, with I, the land. Let's talk a little bit about it. So, uh, excuse me, Yvonne, I parti un peu sur Antigone, on va revenir sur, uh, sur le, le nouvel évangile tout de suite. Oui, Je vais faire un beaucoup. petit statement. Um, um, Antigone ends like all tragedies with an with a, with a, with a excess, with a, with a series of suicides. And of course, this is a Marxist movement and they would never suicide. They continue the struggle. For them, it makes no sense to, to kill yourself. So of course, we added there what we call the sixth act, we added another ending. And I think um, that's the most beautiful part of the play. Um, this obvious change, an actor says the epilogue for Euripides. Uh, and you feel there that we are at the brink of something else. That the tragic mind, which is the Western mind, which is perhaps the capitalist mind, that this is kind of shifting, hopefully, away through the criticism of the peripheries. I think it's not ourselves, Europe ca can overcome the tragic mind. I think it's really, it's the Amazon, for example. It's when you bring the text there, it feels wrong that everybody dies in the end. Of course, they also die, but I will not tell it. Uh, you will see it in the scurble, but then something else happens.
Where did it happen in the Amazon? Was it inside, outside? What was the theater place? Where, where did you decide to stage it? We staged it on the on the Transamazonica. That's a street that goes through the Amazon. And on this street happened the, the massacre, which in which this massacre, the, 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 the play starts. Like Antigone, there's a civil war. The two brothers uh, are confronting each other. They both die, and Creon decides to not bury the body of the brother of Antigone. And there the conflict starts. Exactly the same happened on this street. The military police stopped the demonstration of the landless movement, killed a lot of people, the bodies disappeared. And uh, from there we start. We have a choir of the survivors. It's 25 years ago of the of this of this massacre, and together with them we restage this and and Antigone, of course, on the street. Um, that's how it started. It's in the middle of the of the in the north in the state called Para. Uh, it's uh, it's in the middle of the of the Amazonian region. Of course, the the, the forest itself slowly disappears there, not so slowly, by the way, quite fast. And um, but it was on the street at the day of the massacre, together with the people who survived it. And that makes this other ending even more necessary, of course. It's kind of a memory machine. So you build seats for the audience, like wooden structures. How did you deal with light? And uh... um, you can you actually can see it in the film because they are in the play, because the play starts, we have a big video wall. And the play starts not, I mean, after like 10 minutes, you can see this, this reconstruction on the street. So everybody was standing, but I think this is for the weekend. It's for the weekend. It's very interesting, incredible, um, you know, to really restage something and and um, and to, uh, how, how do we show something that's real? How do we hold up the mirror in the Hamlet sense to the world? And what new ways we find it to make it uh, important, to make it urgent, and to make it in a way real. Um, Ivan, uh, oops, he. Ah, I, he yeah. um, Ivan, um, did you and your collective did you con continue to engage with arts? To is someone writing a play? Is someone making a seven millimeter movie? Uh, uh, and are there exhibitions? Are you continuing the en engagement with art? Or you say your activism is. Milo, could you translate? Oui, je traduis, Yvon. Tu, oui. tu peux m'entendre? Parce que oui. j'ai eu des problèmes de connexion. Donc euh, voilà, je, je m'excuse. Ah, oui. pas grave. Um, alors lui, il demande, après l'expérience du film, euh, No Cap, et en fait tout le monde qui était dans le film, euh, vous continuez. Euh, avec le théâtre, avec le film, vous utilisez ça plus qu'avant dans votre lutte ou vous êtes resté des activistes purs et durs et c'est fini avec l'art euh, Disons qu'on euh, est, on, on est des activistes purs et durs. Euh, nous ne sommes pas des, des, des artistes professionnels. Voilà, notre, notre objectif, c'est de changer le, le, le monde, c'est de changer la, la, la prospective sur le, tra, sur le travail que nous faisons. Et nous continuons avec les instruments que, qui nous sont propres, naturels. Voilà, être sur le terrain, lutter, affronter, voilà. Et le film, c'est une valeur ajoutée, voilà. Euh, Quand, quand on en a besoin, on utilise, voilà, présentation du film pour capter l'attention, voilà. Le film nous accompagne, disons, dans ce cas, pour, voilà, ce thème plus. Um, no, they don't continue uh, with art. They are, as he says, uh, pure and straight uh, activists. They work on the territory. They use their tools uh, to spread the fight. But of course, they use also the film. And uh, they, they use the film to, to, to spread their message, to make things more clear, etc. And that's why they they use art, but they don't do art. Mm -hmm. But in, incredible what this play uh, created, that you got, they got into the supply chain, that they formed kind of a union, that they found housing. I remember from the film, they showed housing that was financed by the United, not the European Union, by the local whatever, construction mafia, but nobody was allowed to go in. You know, they was just pretending. Yeah. 
and um, it was it quite a quite quite stunning in what you um, connected. And Mosul also you left a film school, right? You felt you have to leave something behind. Tell us, is that film school still existing? Do they make films? Or... Um, I mean the the it was a then it was in a series of projects we did the Orestes in Mosul, and then we felt absolutely that this was not enough, uh, and we also understood that. I mean, like distributing the tomatoes, you can distribute the film, but you can't distribute theater. When you live in Mosul, you are blocked. You are blocked inside Iraq. You get, don't get a visa to go out to make touring. And there is no theater industry. So we understood. And at that point, the UNESCO helped us, the, the cultural branch of the United Nations helped us a lot because they invited us to to build a structure to continue to work with these, uh, with these, uh, with these students mainly. Um, with these art students, and we created this film school, which was more a film lab, so really technical support, education, etc. And we created, I think, nine films in the end that went on different festivals uh, throughout Europe. Now, next step is uh, we go back in November. Uh, next step, what we want to do is a, a Mosul Film Festival. That's an old dream, a Biennale. So uh, every second year um to bring people there and to bring the films out so that's the that's the plan some of the students continue to make films became i mean on a certain level successful um others not uh i guess like all art students but it's really it's a hard work it's step by step by step but it's slowly building up mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, let's talk a bit about the idea of that realism. Some say, in a way, what we live in is the idea of capitalist realism. You know, it says, drink this coffee, you're going to have a happy family. Buy these sneakers, you're going to be as good as Michael Jordan. Drink this alcohol and you will be happy. Of course, it's a big lie because actually the opposite is true. More or you drink, worse it will be, you know, you're not mm -hmm. going to be happy because you drink coffee and uh, you're not going to jump ever as high as uh, Michael Jordan just because you buy these sneakers, even you buy 20 of them. Um, it is opposite to kind of the social realism, what equally, you know, was untrue. You now came up in your speech also, you said the social democratic realism perhaps is even worse. Tell us a little bit about this idea and what realism makes to you, means to you. No, I mean social democratic realism is worse than social uh, socialist realism. Was a, is it's a kind of a joke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I've never uh, heard that. Yeah. in the speech, but I sometimes use it to describe a kind of a I don't know a kind of a social art without any impact and without any uh, structural change in it, so that you would kind of create a perfect space where perfectly happy people are doing a perfectly uh, let's say purely moral kind of art and outside nothing changes. So for me, again, perhaps we come back to the question, why not having an actor playing Jesus? Why connecting to an activist? Why kind of deciding together what it should be? Why insisting that in the end, everybody gets a contract, there is a distribution system, there is housing, there is what is called regularization of the people that I mean, Yvonne didn't say it, but we have now more than 1,000 people that were slave workers have now contracts. So really to make a change. And even if he says the film, I use it, I will not continue to do art, fine for me. Because that's it. And I think this is, this is a... I don't... You know, socialist realism was trying to describe the world as if there would already be the, the kind of the utopia of the future and there's the good worker and the bad capitalist. And it's a kind of a of a very black and white realism. Socialist realism is trying to create so-called bubbles and inside these bubbles, there is perfection, you know? And you would like, you would, yeah, you would behave in a very nice way. And, and I think what I try to do is really to bring the horrible conflicts of the outside that we push to the south of Italy, that we push to the Middle East, we Europeans, because that's my perspective, to bring back in the middle of our system and try in small parts to, to change it through the process of art. And that's the, that's the I don't know how, how, how you can call it, I call it global realism, so that you bring things that are 
You know, we export, for example, we have no child work in the center of Europe, but we have it in the peripheries of Europe. And of course, we have it outside Europe. So child work didn't disappear, it just disappeared from Paris and Berlin. And I think this is, so we have to bring it back, or at least the images, we have to make a connection and to change it on a, on a, on a global level. And that's, yeah. That's what we're trying to do. And that's nice why me and Yvonne, we have no reason to work together. There is no, it was not foreseen. There was no meeting point. There was not, we just decided from both sides, it will help us. Yeah, and I think your theater helps us to find meaning, to look back at what it was and also towards what can be changed. Theater, if it is interesting at all, is because it's a model for something. If change happens through a theater or you can see something where change is possible, it also means it is uh, possible in the world. That's also why it get, gets censored. And I think it helps us to understand that the perfect, what was say, capitalist realism, you know, the commercials, we look all very real, how fake they are, or perhaps, you know, all these ideological models of a realism, you know, they do not carry change. And they more for such a tiny number of audiences where um, effects are completely exaggerated, you know, by also often by art critics, and they do not really contribute. You know, the work of the great Tanya Bruguera shows it's really, uh, you know, what a change could mean if an artist engages um, in, in uh, these questions. We have a couple of minutes left. Um, both questions for you, um, Ivan and Milo, maybe Ivan said, what are you working on now? What's new? Ivan, uh, on a encore quelques minutes, alors une question à toi. Tu travailles sur quoi maintenant? Quel est ton nouveau projet? Tu es sur quoi? Non, et alors, euh, mon objectif, euh, c'est toujours de, avoir beaucoup, de, de faire sortir plus de travailleurs qui subissent l'esclavage, de leur donner la dignité. Voilà, ça, c'est un peu l'objectif, c'est d'étendre toujours nos caps, et ce n'est pas facile. Hein. Voilà, et euh, aujourd'hui, euh, Chaque année, en moyenne, nous donnons la dignité des contrats de travail, une maison, des, à, 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 à peu près 500 personnes. Nous sommes déjà à plus de 2000 de, 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 depuis quatre ans quand on a commencé. Voilà, notre autre objectif, c'est de donner, d'arriver à 20 000, 30 000 personnes dans les prochains euh, 10 années. Voilà, euh, c'est connaître le mouvement de consommateurs, euh, le mouvement... De, dans tout le dans tout le dans tout le monde entier voilà et créer un grand mouvement autour de la nourriture autour de l'agriculture durable um, I translate um, his his objective is to to give contracts and dignity every year to more and more and more so it's the same project more and more uh, former slave workers so in the moment, uh, since we made the project, it's like 500 people that he can bring out of slavery every year. So he arrived now in the four years on 2000. His plan is to, in the next year, bring out 30,000. And he knows that only if the consumers became become aware of it and start to buy the good products worldwide, that this can accelerate this process. And that's his project. Thank you, Ivan. Milo, what about you? Um, I mean, I'm coming. Uh, I'm coming to New York, and um, I'm 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 very much involved now in this Vienna uh, festival in the creation of the next edition. I did the first edition, which was the creation of the so-called Free Republic of Vienna. One of our honorary members is, of course, Ivan. He gave a workshop, he showed the film and other movements. So we invite a lot of people to Vienna and we, we, we show a lot of shows. And of course, I will see in New York some artists that I think are super interesting to invite them to, to Vienna to be part of this festival. The Vienna Festival is the biggest crossover festival on the continent in Europe. So we have a lot of possibilities and I slowly, like a bit Yvonne, every year more, I start quite fast. Uh, I want to make out of this quite bourgeois festival more a kind of a toolbox for the for the future. And that's what we are doing together with activists and artists and all kinds of organizations, the citizens, and so on and so on. For example, in this discussion too, or in the days coming in New York, we try to 
like Yvonne, to globally connect uh, to all kinds of other organizations that can, because we, we will only make it together. And I think that what happens in the in the agriculture or in the sector he is working on, a real change away from the system of exploitation to something more human, we should also do it in the art sector. We should ask ourselves, for who do we do this? What are we? What kind of stories are we telling? Who is telling these stories? How do we connect reality and the art sector? How is this? How is this all working? And I think this is, uh, yeah, this is the move that we have to do in this generation. And I, I, I make a lot of different projects, but in the end, it all goes in the same direction. Fantastic, and I hope. Um, that the Siegel Center will be able in some way, is that perhaps also a New York festival, a small one starting out to collaborate with you and bring this so it's urgently needed, I think, art um, um, to the city, but also to the citizens as a public theater, public festival, Théâtre Populaire, as the French say. And, uh, and as you say, we have to understand that problems are global. Yeah. Climate change, you know, is the racism, is just hatred of women, um, of... It, LGBT people and they'll go on and on. These are global uh, problems, not for local elections. Even we have the big one coming up, and we need to collaborate, as also companies do internationally, globally. We have to collaborate. Thank you um, um, so much, Emilio, for uh, uh, taking the time. It's such an inspiration. Your work is so so different, so authentic, and um, and it's also evolving. It's changing, um, and I think this is a sign of a great. Art and Ivan, thank you so much uh, for for being with us. And um, merci beaucoup, Ivan, d'être avec nous. Yeah, we admire your work, and maybe the, merci fam à vous. the famous tomato cans of Andy Warhol, a great New York artist, where says we have to look at surfaces, and then perhaps we can go deeper. You know, but <laughs> yes. this is a way to say let's look deeper uh, at the tomato cans, and maybe somewhere he was thinking about this. Where does it come from, really? What we have in front of us, and in so many, but what is behind it? What make it, and what do we consume um, yeah. with knowing, you know, it's based on criminal slave work. So, um, I mean, there's a very funny fact because you have, a, you have the, the, there's a big museum uh, in Slovakia because Andy Warhol comes from Slovakia and uh, there's a big museum and they have a right wing. I also talk about this in my speech. There's a right wing government and they are now nationalizing this the 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 birth house of Andy Warhol and making out of this museum a national museum, you know. So I think that also for him uh, behind the surfaces is a lot. It's a lot, um, and that's what theater people but, do. You have to look behind and towards the invisible. What is? But that's what's really guiding us. Thank you all. We will continue the screening right away here at the Siegel Center. Sorry, we made a little bit over time, but not too much. And also on HowlRound, we want to thank HowlRound again, for being such a fantastic platform. I apologize that we started a couple of minutes late, but thank you both. And uh, Milo, hope to see you soon here in New York and that we also have time to talk. Thank you. Bye-bye. Merci. Bye -bye.